Hello, and welcome to Castles and Curiosities. My name is Rhys, and along with my fellow ape Steve, we'll be taking you around the United Kingdom, from castles to forts to gardens and anything we can find, really. Or I would, if I could find Steve. I'm not entirely sure he's woken up yet. Sod it, we'll drag him out a bit later. For now, allow me to introduce Porchester Castle. The Romans began conquering Britain around 43 AD, and they were largely successful in conquering much of the island, except for the tribes of Caledonia in what is today known as Scotland. They were just way too difficult to deal with, so the Romans just decided, we'll build a wall, because that'll work, right? No? Two walls? The Romans would maintain their control over Britain for the better part of the next four centuries, though in the third century, the empire would find itself being torn apart by civil wars, violent successions of emperors, and fresh attacks from outside, making defence of their territories increasingly difficult. There's a document we still have left over from the late Roman Empire, and it's called the Natitia Dignitatum, or if you want to use English, it's the list of offices. It's an administrative document for the organisation of the Roman Empire, and it details nine of these Saxon shore forts stretching along the southeast coast of England, from Porchester to Brancaster. Now the fort here is believed to be Portus Aderni, and it was built in the latter part of the 3rd century, sometime after 268, although we, we just don't know the exact date. It's possible the fort was built by Carausius, one of Britain's many rebellious, self-proclaimed emperors, and he consolidated control over many British provinces between 286 and 293. Coins minted by Carausius have actually been found during excavations at Porchester, lending some credence to this idea. If the fort was built by Carausius, then it may have also been intended to help him defend against a possible Roman retaliation, though given his assassination just seven years after he claimed power, it would never have seen use as such, instead falling into what we know of it today, defence against Saxons and other invaders. Of the other eight shore forts mentioned in the Notitia Dignitatum, a few still survive today in various states of ruin, such as Anderitum, Portus Retupis, Regolbium and uh, Garianinum. Ga Garianinum? What is that? Given Porchester's location and excellent condition, you can actually walk the entirety of the outer walls. Now the fort encloses an area of nine acres, and these walls were originally 20 feet high and 10 feet thick. If you head along the south wall, you can clearly see the different construction methods. There's courses of flint rubble and courses of a bonding stone, and there's even occasionally red brick. As I said earlier, there was originally 20 of these D-shaped towers, or more correctly, bastions, projecting from the outer wall. There was one based at each corner and then four spaced evenly along it. Some have been lost due to erosion, which is no surprise given how close the fort is to the sea but others were demolished to become materials and to make way for the Norman keep. The two main gates to the fort exist on the east and west sides, known respectively as the Water Gate and the Land Gate, though these were substantially rebuilt in later periods. There were also smaller postern gates in the north and south walls, and the southern archway no longer exists at all, filled in at some point in the site's long history. The Romans continued to occupy this fort and indeed Britain, all the way until the start of the 5th century. The new emperor, Constantine III, withdrew almost all of the Roman army from Britain, and it did not take long for those previously occupied lands to be invaded once again. You had the Scotti from Ireland, the Picts from Scotland, the Jutes from Denmark, and of course, the Angles and the Saxons from Germany. For a short period, a small territory of native Britons existed along the south coast, one of many tribes of natives trying to reassert themselves after centuries of Roman occupation. It's likely these Brits also occupied Portus Aderni. 
Excavations in the 1960s uncovered evidence of the burial of 27 infants, timber houses, and workshops, suggesting that many civilians were using the fort as shelter sometime near the end of Roman rule. The Anglo-Saxon chronicles tell us, in, in very little detail actually, but they tell us in 501, a man named Port and his two sons Beda and Mila landed two ships at Portsmouth, killing a high-ranking Briton. And from this point, the area would fall under Saxon rule becoming part of the eventual Kingdom of Wessex. May even be Port himself that lends Porchester its name. Kester was the Saxon name for a Roman fort, and under Port's control it would have been Port Kester. With the passage of time, it's easy to see how that gives us Porchester. In the 9th century, Alfred the Great began creating a network of forts across his kingdom to help fight the Danes. These forts were called Burrs becoming a place of refuge for those in a 15-mile radius in the event of an attack. At the very beginning of the 10th century, upon his death, Alfred was succeeded by his son, Edward the Elder, who would continue fortifying the south of England against the Danish Vikings. As part of that, he would repair the Roman fort at Porchester, it becoming one of these burrs. And quite a wealthy one, it seems. The Burgle Hidaj, an Anglo-Saxon document that lists the taxes and maintenance of burrs across the kingdom, shows its value at 500 hides. Nearby Southampton was worth just 150. We also know, some time in the 10th century, a manorial hall and a tower were built within the confines of the fort, suggesting it saw at least some use as a high-status residence. And that really covers Porchester up until 1066, where not only would the use of this fort change drastically, but so too would the fate of this entire country. Next episode, we're going to head into the Inner Bailey and we'll start taking a look at what the Normans built here, the kings that would take up residence, and the plot to dethrone one. Thank you kindly for the view, and I'll see you again soon. Hey, that's my thing. <laughs>